This episode of Android Weekly is brought to you by Full Sail University. Welcome back to Android Weekly. My name is Jace, and this is where we cover the week's Android news, like how LG dropped new details of their LG GG watch, and Samsung, of course, launched officially their new flagship tablets, and Google wants us all to take a quantum leap. Oh, that hurts just looking at it. Well, that's not exactly right because it's actually quantum paper, not quantum leap. But every time I hear the word quantum, I think of the 80s television show when television mattered. But it turns out quantum paper is simply Google's continued effort to have a consistent design language right across multiple platforms. So whether you're using iOS, Android, or the web, the design language or user experience is going to look very much the same. The updated design is expected to bring a new icon set, however. It appears that each service will gain its own color identifier. We already see red for the Google Plus app, Gmail may get blue, and Calendar will get white or green, and so on and so on. Now, for all of you looking for news about the LG GG Watch, anonymous sources have told Madaco that LG's Android Wear device will be launched as early as July 7th to conclude just after the Google I.O. conference. Now, these charts came by way of UpLeaks, the same leaker that recently brought us a system dump of the G Watch. If the charts prove correct, the G Watch will offer a 1.6 inch display with a 280 by 280 resolution, four gigabytes of storage, which has gotta be a typo, and a 400 milliamp hour battery with standby time of 36 hours and will take up to two hours to fully charge. Wowzers. The watch will have the overall dimensions of 37.9 times 46.5 times 9.95 millimeters and will weigh approximately 61 grams. Now the notion that the device will have four gigabytes of storage is ridiculous. It's probably gonna have 512 megs or one gigabyte, but that's just our speculation. So for those of you who know me from my original channel, How to Become TV, which all focuses on how best to pursue a career in software development, you'll know that there is one big painful truth. And it's not just that there are not enough developers to meet the demand, but there's not enough developers with the deep technical skill set necessary to build the apps that are in the highest demand. That's why programs like Full Sail University really shine and are so fundamentally important. In this degree program, you'll learn specific technology used in creating and distributing apps so that you can conceive, develop, deploy, and market an application from start to finish. Full Sail also offers the online mobile gaming master's degree program, allowing you to expand on your programming skills while learning how to improve the mobile gaming experience. Through Full Sail's Project Lunchbox program, students receive a MacBook Pro, industry software, plus iOS and Android devices. Now, if tech is your calling, don't waste any time. Go to fullsale.edu forward slash authority. Now, for those of you who bought the OnePlus One, we have some news for you about the delays. Earlier this week, OnePlus One fans were disappointed to learn that the shipments of the OnePlus One would be delayed due to software issues. Such delays happen all the time in the industry and normally wouldn't be a huge deal, but OnePlus One seems to be exhausting its reserves of public goodwill after several controversial episodes of a heavy teasing campaign that built huge anticipation for the 2014 flagship killer. The software issues that reportedly caused the last minute delays are now solved and devices should be shipping soon. Here's the statement we received from OnePlus One. We did choose to delay the shipment of the first phones in order to make sure the software was secure and provided the best possible user experience. The Senate Jamaat team worked very quickly and efficiently and the open SSL issues have been fixed. The first OnePlus Ones will ship to early users with invites as early as tomorrow. Keep in mind that that statement came on July 11th, so if this is correct, those phones should have shipped out three days ago. Now, many of you will have been waiting with great anticipation for Samsung's new flagship tablets with their sweet, AMOLED displays. Under the hood, we find either an Exynos 5 Octa or a 2.3 quad-core Snapdragon 801 CPU, depending on whether or not you end up with the Wi-Fi or LTE version. Both models contain three gigabytes of RAM, an 8.4 or 10.5 inch AMOLED display and resolution of 2560 by 1600, 16 gigabytes or 32 gigabytes of storage, a micro SD card slot, and support for 128 gigabyte expansion, an eight megapixel rear facing camera, 2.1 megapixel front facing camera, and a 6.6 .6 millimeter thick profile. 
Now the major difference between the two is that the 10.5 inch model has a 7,900 milliamp hour battery as opposed to the 4,900 milliamp battery found on the 8.4 inch model. Thanks for watching Android Army. My name is Jace. Love to connect with you here on Google Plus or Twitter. You don't want to forget about my brothers in Android, Josh, Joe, and the Tech Ninja, Kevin, Lon, and Chris. We're all working very hard for you. You don't want to forget about the Android Authority forums, where I monitor those and I look for uh, the best questions and answers to include in the Android Q&A next week. Talk to you then.